welcome. I'm your host, Christina Haskin, and tonight I have the pleasure of having Lita Reuter, who's the owner and director of Seniors Helping Seniors. She comes from the Netherlands, and she was educated in Utrecht, having an MA in sociology and family therapy. And she also studied at the University of Wisconsin with um, her major was linguistics. She has a PhD and in linguistics and had a language business and now she's doing um, this wonderful business, Seniors Helping Seniors. So thank you for coming. Um, thank you, thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about um, Seniors Helping Seniors and how you got into it? Yeah, so uh, I always had a language business in the uh, uh, lower Fairfield County in Greenwich, but also in Westchester. And when the economy broke in 2008, uh, I still continued to run it, but it really became much smaller. So I was in, in uh, looking for another opportunity where I could uh, use the skills that I had developed running the other business. So not being so young anymore, I thought this would be a great way to, to use the way I'd match people from a, a need and a person who fulfilled the need and now supply it to the seniors. And of course we know the seniors is a growing market, uh, we're all part of it, and I thought I could make a difference by uh, using my people skills like that. Well, tell us a little bit about this. It's, it's, um, you're going to people's homes so they can stay in their home, and you're getting, bringing people, um, seniors to uh, be the caretakers and to help other seniors. And right. where, where did that idea come from? Or well, we, uh, the idea comes from, um, so a, a lady called uh, Kirm Jokum, who is in Pennsylvania, she started it. And what attracted me to the business right away is that uh, she actually worked for uh, Mother Teresa for 14 years, and uh, so she was a volunteer. And so this business really is different from other businesses help working with seniors in that they stress that we have to have the heart of a volunteer. We care a little bit better. And so on the other hand, uh, we. I like to run a business because in a business you have the opportunity to uh, demand a little bit more of a structure. People have to be on time, they, uh, we hope to work with them and to, since we pay them to, to um, demand that they have the training and they keep up in the professional development. So I like that aspect of it. Now to your point on whether we go to the homes, we do go to the homes, but we also go to all the other facilities. We also go to assisted living, nursing oh, homes, wow, yeah. we provide the extra that other people cannot provide. And you're, you're providing um, what kind of services, not medical, but every other, can you tell right, us some we, of the services? Yeah. We provide non-medical, but uh, for the rest we do everything. If we go to the home, we could do a little yard work. We, make, we do anything it takes, except heavy lifting, um, to keep a person in their home longer. And by focusing on the relationship, by having seniors who will develop relationships of friendship and compatibility with other seniors, people will stay in their home longer. So it will be companionship, reminding them to take their medication, driving them to the dentist, uh, whatever, uh, you know, small meal preparation, whatever it takes. Well, um, I know you're a person who's uh, passionate about helping people. Where, can you tell us uh, your experience with older people? That, did you have anything that made you uh, feel that this is a comfortable area for you to be in? Yeah, it's kind of a little interesting because in fact I never really did have grandparents because they passed away before I came alive and, and one stayed longer but I never got to know her very well. So I've always had an interest in uh, fulfilling that need and I've always gravitated to a senior, the senior person in the room because I'm interested in their stories, in the life they have led. Uh, when I came to America, my first job was in Wisconsin, was taking care of an old elderly person who was 81. He had muscular dystrophy, and his wife needed uh, sometimes a little time off, so I would come in. And I enjoyed that very much because he loved teaching me English while I just and, and I loved listening to his stories. And I really made him a happy person just by being interested in him. And in a way, what I'm trying to do with this new business, it's pretty much the same. Well, I think, yeah, you're going to um, be able to create 
work and employment for people who are retired? Or what is the age? I mean, every, everybody's a se senior can stretch from. What's the age range of the senior helpers? But throughout the country, mm -hmm. it, the oldest provider is 94. So oh, we wow. really do take that very seriously. And what's the youngest age? We try to hire over 50. Uh -huh. I think in general, over 60 is more realistic. I think uh -huh. the average age for the provider is 65. So still strong, still very capable, but uh, maybe not in need of other employment. Right, and they're looking for more purpose. And, and, and uh, w with your experience with the older gentleman, you got as much out of it as probably he did, and that's the, uh, the thing that is and that's Yeah, right, because we know from the research that if you have a good companion, uh, be it a sister who calls you every day or a neighbor who checks up on every day, but the long-term relationships makes you happier, and happier actually translates into healthier. So uh, we hope to provide that as well. So not just somebody who checks on you, but somebody who cares for you and will follow you through that. So we, we look for the long-term relationships. And people who don't, who want to do this, who enjoy, who probably have volunteered before and now maybe want to earn a little money as well, especially in this economy, but um, do they have to make a full commitment to like, you know, a whole week or is it, can, how do you work their schedules and, uh, and also their personalities of who they go with? Right. So. Well, for both aspects, we can be very flexible. We have a minimum of two hours because that's just minimum to make, make it worth the drive or the commitment. But some people only want to do two hours or maybe a few times a week, two hours. Other people really like to be busy and want to uh, get as many hours as they can. We make that both possible. We uh, do have an extensive interview process where we don't just check for qualifications and background, of course, but we also look for hobbies, interests, what theater they may like, what books they may like. So we really do go for that relationship so they have lots to talk about and develop a friendship. Does the person who's applying to be um, a caregiver, do they have to have a background in that or experience as a caregiver? No, and what if uh, they don't really, what anybody... What are the qualities that you look for in a person then? The, the real major quality that we are looking for is the heart of a volunteer, and uh, we really mean that. Uh, so we are looking for people who have volunteered in their past, so uh, either with elderly people or with uh, other situations of people who need a little extra help. That is the most important criterion. What I have found so far, fortunately, is that uh, a wide range of people are interested in working with me, some of them highly professional uh, backgrounds in public relations, um, big companies, other people who have a lot of backgrounds in the healthcare sector, nurses uh, and healthcare workers. So it, that's very good for us. And it's not just, uh, it can be men as well, right? It's not. Yeah, we do. There are, the majority is women who will be doing the care, but right away I got uh, applicants for men who are interested in helping out, who also are interested in providing the full range of care. So I'm proud to be open-minded about that. Yeah, well, because also, I mean, um, people that are kind of thinking about they have a, a, a parent or a, an elderly person who may be coming around to needing, becoming more dependent, and they need to think about the future of what they're going to do and, and how they can try and maybe avoid going into a home. Mm -hmm. And how can they, if they contacted you, do you come and sort of help them plan that? or? Um, right, and we, work? of course, uh, most of the referrals do come from the children. Uh, they don't come from the elderly person who is in need. Uh, that happens too, of course. And yes, we will come in and do an extensive assessment, not just about the care, but also just like with the providers, what kind of person it is, what kind of interest they have, whether they are outgoing, whether they are more uh, readers and more analytical. We, so we, we, we have a long-term assessment as well. And we like to come in before the need arises.